All right, everybody. Today we're going to be doing lesson 7-3, Understanding Experimental Probability. Well, let's go over our first one. It says, Kevin is awarded a penalty shot. He will either score a goal or not score a goal. Are both outcomes equally likely? And then it says to explain. Well, it says look for the relationship. What might affect the outcome? Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, he's either going to make a score or he's not going to make a score. Uh, what might affect the outcome? Well, uh, I would say that uh, based on his skill level of uh, uh, hitting the ball into the net and uh, the goalie skill level of deflecting are the only two things that might affect the outcome. It says here Kevin could score a goal or the goalie could block the puck. I don't know why they call it a puck. It's make it sound like a hockey game. Uh, which means he would not score. The probability for each outcome is one half. It says here, uh, Lowell Senior High School soccer team won 12, lost five, and tied three of their first 20 games this season. Which outcome is most likely for the team's next game? Explain your reasoning. Well, uh, the team has a very high uh, win record, so we would expect the team to win, but it's not guaranteed because we have no idea of the record of the opposing team. They might be really awesome. It says, based on the data given, the soccer team is most likely to win their next game. In the real world, however, the likelihood of a win also depends on the record and skill of the opposing team. Oh. It says, Talia and Yoshi plan for one out of eight, or 12.5% of the players, winning a prize. Well, during the school fair, they kept track of the number of total players and winners and recorded the data in the table below. How does the actual number of winner compare to the expected number of winners? Remember, we're comparing what actually happened to what we expected to happen. Well, step one, determine the relative frequency of winners during each time period. The relative frequency is the ratio of the number of times an event occurred to the total number of trials. In other words, how many times you actually succeeded over how many times you attempted. Well, according to this table, it says uh, from 10 to noon, 213 players uh, out of the 213 players, 22 were winners. So that's 22 out of 213, which equals about 10.3%. But from noon to two, there were 262 players and 36 of them were winners. That's 36 out of 262, which is about 13.7%, uh, quite a significant percentage higher than what it was at noon, uh, 10 to noon. And the total, if we add these together, will be 475 with 56 wins, and that'll give us uh, an average of about 12.2%. Now you might notice the bigger the amount that uh, of attempts that we did, the closer our number came to the actual theoretical probability. We're only about 0.3 away. Relative frequency of an event can also be called the experimental probability. Compare the experimental probability based on the data to the theoretical probability of winning the game. Remember, experimental probability is what actually happened. Theoretical probability is what should happen. Well, the theoretical, pro theoretical probability was 12.5%. The experimental probability, as we stated before, was 12.2%. In the previous lesson, Talia and Joshi expected about 63 winners per 500 players based on theoretical probability. But based on the data, there were actually 58 winners out of 475 players. Actually, that's pretty close to the amount that we uh, were saying. Experimental probability is slightly lower than the theoretical probability of winning this game. There were slightly fewer winners than expected. Well, during the second day of the school fair, Talia and Yoshi recorded 43 winners out of a total of 324 players. How does the actual number of winners compare to the expected number of winners? Well, the theoretical probability was one out of eight. 
which was about 12.5. This time we've got about 43 out of 324. And 43 divided by 324 is going to give us 0.133. But remember, we've got to take that decimal point and move it over twice to the right to get our percent. This experimental probability is blank than the theoretical. Well, the theoretical was 12.5. The experimental was 13.2, so it's higher or greater than the theoretical probability. There were blank winners than expected. Well, I would say there's more winners, right? More winners than expected. All right, to convince me, will experimental probability always be close to the theoretical probability? Well, I would say most of the time, but definitely not every time. Experimental probability may or may not be close to theoretical probability. For example, it is possible for a coin to land on heads up six times in a row, which differs from theoretical probability of landing on heads three times out of six flips. Wow, that money just seemed to get bigger and bigger. Use experimental probability to make predictions. Jaquan also kept track of players and winners for his game during the fair. Based on the results shown on the table, how many winners should he expect if 300 people play his game? Well, looks like from 10 to noon, 174 people played, 28 winning, which gave us about 16.1%. From noon to 2, it's like 242 players uh, attempted, but only 43 won, which gave us a, a probability of 17.8, an, an experimental probability of 17.8. Remember, these things actually happen, so these are experimental results. And if we took the total, uh, we would see that we would have 416 attempts and 71 wins, and that gives us a probability of 17.1%. Well, use proportional reasoning to predict the number of likely winners, which is, we'll call W, based on the experimental probability. There were 71 winners out of 461, and now we want to find out how many would it be if it was 300 winners or 300 players, excuse me. This time we're actually going lower in number instead of higher in number. And we're going to go ahead and solve this like an equation. I'm dividing W by 300, so I have to multiply by 300 in order to go ahead and get rid of that uh, denominator and have W by itself. Whatever I multiply to one side, I must multiply to the other. And 71 times 300 divided by 416 is 51.2. Jaquan should expect about 51 winners out of 300 players. Example three says, Amir and Marvin each flip a coin 50 times and record the results of each flip. The tables show the results. Over here it says Amir uh, had 26 heads and 24 tails. While Marvin had 30 heads and 20 tails. Based on the theoretical probability, what are the expected results of 50 flips? Well, 50 coin flips would usually result in about 25 of them being heads and 25 of them being tails. So there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails, and both outcomes are equally likely. For each coin flip, the probability of landing on heads or tails is one out of two or one half. After 50 flips, the result should be about 25 heads and 25 tails. So as you can see here, Mir's results really came close to the theoretical probability. But Marvin's results were quite different than what we thought would happen. Why might the results be different from the expected results based on theoretical probability? Well, theoretical probability can be used to estimate results, but it doesn't guarantee the results. The more times they flip their coin, the more likely it is that their results will be closer to the theoretical probability. What this means is the greater the number of times we conduct our experiments, the more closer our numbers should be to the experimental uh, probability. Well, Mira and Marvin continue until each flip the coin 200 times. How do you expect Amir's results and Marvin's results to compare? How will the results compare with expected results based on theoretical probability? 
Well, Mir's results and Marvin's results will probably be closer than the results from only 50 coin flips. Remember what we said, the more attempts that you do, the more likely it's going to come closer to your theoretical probability. Their results will probably be close, but not exactly match uh, the expected results based on theoretical probability. We're up to our key concepts. Relative frequency or experimental probability is based on the actual results of an experiment, while theoretical probability is based on the calculated results from the knowledge of the possible outcomes. Experimental probability and theoretical probability may be close, but are rarely exactly the same. Remember, experimental probability is the number of times an event occurred, not the number of times it should occur. And the total number of times the experiment is carried out would be the denominator. Experimental probability tends to get closer to the theoretical probability of an experiment as more trials are conducted. How is experimental probability similar to, similar to and different from theoretical probability? Well, theoretical probability is calculated based on knowing all possible or equally likely outcomes of an event. But experimental probability depends on the results of an actual experiment. They can both be used to estimate or make predictions. So basically what this means is theoretical probability is calculated on what is possible or what's going to happen based on the equally likely outcomes of an event. But experimental probability is what really happened. Number two, how can experimental probability be used to make predictions? Well, use proportional reasoning to write and solve a proportion with the experimental probability ratio. In other words, in, instead of using the theoretical ratio, we're going to use the experimental probability ratio. Reasoning, is experimental probability always close to theoretical probability? No. Experimental probability is based on an experiment. So it may or may not be close to theoretical probability. As the number of trials increases, the experimental probability tends to become closer to the theoretical probability. Even after many trials of an experiment, the experimental probability will usually not be exactly equal to the theoretical probability. Well, it says, uh, how do you know? Kelly flips a coin 20 times. The results are shown in the table where H represents the coin landing heads and T represents the coin landing on tails. The theoretical probability that the coin will land heads up is, remember, theoretical means what should happen. Well, it can either be heads or tails, so that's 50% of the time it will be heads up. Based on the data, the experimental probability that the coin will land heads up is what? Well, this time we're going to go ahead and look at what really happened. Uh, if we look at heads, remember we did it 20 times here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 times out of 20, it was heads. That's 55%. If you're wondering how I got 55, take 11 and divide it by 20. Remember, when we say the experimental probability, it's what really happened. So that's 20 heads out of 20, or uh, 11 heads out of 20 attempts. So that's 11 divided by 20, and that will give you 0.55 and then you move the decimal over twice and it becomes 55%. Number six, the experimental probability is blank than the theoretical. Well, experimental is higher, greater than the theoretical. Well, looks like the rest is your homework. So I guess I'll leave the rest for you. Uh, good luck and remember to check out your homework video if you get stuck. Have a great night.